what is going on guys, Max Settings here, and welcome back to another review. Uh, sorry I've been gone for the last couple of weeks, I've been kind of busy with some work, uh, but now I am back. Uh, this is also going to be the first review with my new channel art, so big thanks and big congratulations to the winner of that. I will be sending the prizes out shortly, as well as the prizes to the runner-ups. They've all been contacted and notified. Uh, and I'm also using a new microphone for this one, which is the CAD E100S, so let me know how uh, that sounds compared to my last microphone being the Lewitt LCT440. Uh, but anyway, today we are going to be taking a look at the Odyssey Mobius. Now, this is one of Odyssey's two uh, gaming headset offerings, the other one being the LCD GX, but this is their uh, more, I'd say more traditional uh, gaming headset being a closed back uh, with some features and such. So getting specs out of the way, this thing is 399 planar magnetic closed back. It is active with a frequency response of 10 to 50,000 hertz and it weighs 350 grams. So the Mobius, there's a lot to cover with this, so I'm gonna try to do it as quickly as possible and only really focus on the highlights because otherwise, otherwise this video will be an hour long and I do not want it to be that long because people already complain that like 20 minutes is too long. Uh, so uh, quickly going over the stuff. So the Mobius build, is uh, different than other Odyssey. Now this one is made in China, unlike uh, pretty much every other Odyssey headphone as far as I know is made in America. But the Mobius is made in China. So overall, uh, just a plastic construction all around. Plastic headband, plastic slide thing, plastic yokes, plastic uh, cups, uh, pleather pads with the little uh, LNR indicators, uh, and then the buttons and inputs uh, there. Uh, and then this is the copper color. There's also a blue and a silver color. Uh, I really like the silver one that that like just came out at the time that I bought this one. Uh, but that is definitely the one I would go for if you're buying them new because that's like really a uh, muted color scheme. I really like that look. Uh, and now as for comfort, the Mobius comfort is going to vary uh, depending on the person. Uh, like all headphones, but I think the areas where it could suffer is with the pads. They are somewhat thin and small, uh, as you can see, like compared to two of my fingers. And if you have larger ears, it's going to push against the phaser in here, and that could definitely get uncomfortable. Uh, it's not as bad as like the Odyssey sign was, the on ear, uh, technically six, uh, predecessor to the Mobius, but uh, relatively small pads, so people with large ears uh, should uh, watch out for that. Uh, and then this headband padding, I could see maybe giving people uh, hot spots on the top of their head, but this is not too, too heavy, so it shouldn't be too bad of a problem. Uh, but this thing, I'd say maybe after an hour, hour and a half, does somewhat get to me, but not too, too bad overall. Now, as for included accessories, you do get this case. Uh, and inside you will find a few things. So you will have a USB uh, A to C cable. Uh, this one here is an Amazon Basics one because mine didn't come with the original one. So I don't know how long the original one is, but this is just like a nine foot uh, Amazon Basics one. You also get a type C to type A, which is only like four feet. Uh, and then you get a three and a half millimeter auxiliary cable. And they all have this little spot to go uh, up here on top. And you will also find the microphone inside because this is a gaming headset. And we'll go over this thing in just a bit. Okay, so here we have the Mobius and the microphone. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and do sound first uh, and then move on into all the features and whatnot because there is a lot, of, lot to cover. And if I do the feature, uh, all the features first, people are gonna complain that the sound is like 17 minutes into this video. Uh, so of note, this headphone has a lot of different presets for the sound, and I'm only going to be reviewing it off of the default profile because uh, that is the standard one. I think that's the one that they m most want you to use, but there is other ones like uh, flat, warm, and music, and I'm not gonna go over all of those in great detail, once again, for the sake of time. So my review of these is gonna be just with them in the default profile, but you can play around with the other ones yourself. So starting off with the bass, the bass extends uh, pretty nicely all the way down to 20 hertz, um, with the, I'd say a little, maybe just a little bit of a sub bass boost, uh, like maybe one to two dB. Uh, and then after that, I do hear kind of a strange, like one 800, 1K kind of peak. 
a little bit, maybe two or three dB uh, notice during sign sweep. Uh, and then after that, I did notice what sounded like a little bit of like a 3K peak uh, that doesn't show up in the measurements, but I noticed uh, listening to sign sweep. So I think there's a little bit of a 3K peak, uh, which makes sense because these measure with like a two, 3K peak, uh, because these are a similar driver. Uh, and then after that, uh, there is a decent recession of, I'd say, 4 or 5 dB uh, from about 4 to 6K. There's just a little uh, mid-recession there. And then after that, like 7 to 10K, your treble comes right back up. A little bit of like 9, 10K peak as usual, but with a fairly in-line treble all uh, the rest of the way with a decent amount of air. Uh, so these are actually relatively inoffensive uh, Fairly flat base, little weird thing going on in your lower mids with a very shallow dip in your uh, upper mids with a mostly inline treble. So these run fairly neutral-ish overall. Not, uh, I mean, they're not neutral, but not too um, colored, I would say. Uh, definitely not as much as like a LCD headphone, like an LC2 or something, because those start rolling off at like one, one and a half K where these go all the way to like four uh, before they start rolling off. So not uh, too, too bad of an FR. Now soundstage is fairly small, not the greatest soundstage with also fairly mediocre imaging, uh, but that's to be expected out of most closed back headphones. Uh, and then the detail is actually uh, really good actually. It does remind me a lot of the Odyssey sign. It's a similar level of detail to that. Uh, now it's going to be not quite as detailed as open back op uh, options in this price point because uh, you always give up some detail for a close back. But detail wise for like three, four hundred dollars, uh, I would say it's definitely fair given that it's a close back and a close back market, like I mentioned, is tough. So but yeah, detail wise, I'd say they're definitely pretty good and acceptable for a close back at this price point. Uh, dynamics is actually really good. Um, it's not quite as much as like an LCD2, but it does have a very nice punchy dynamics with a nice bass. Uh, it's certainly acceptable of this price point. Uh, and then timbre is uh, fairly standard for lower end planars. Uh, plastic key, but not too, too bad. And I'd say not quite as bad as like the Sundara or something like that. But not insanely natural uh, timbre like a Sennheiser or something uh, along those lines. Okay, so that was the sound in the default profile. So now we have to go over the quirks and features of the Mobius going full Doug DeMuro here. So the Mobius is an active headphone, meaning that there is an internal amplifier and DAC. So you do have to uh, turn it on. It also supports Bluetooth and all the codecs, LDAC and all that modern Bluetooth codecs. Uh, and it has a lot of different um, modes and sound profiles and other 3D stuff to go over. So let's look at the cup with all the controls. So here you will find a power button, a microphone mute switch. On the bottom you will find the volume wheel, the microphone volume wheel which is also used to change between uh, the stereo and 7.1 modes as well as switch between the sound profiles. Three and a half millimeter uh, auxiliary input the USB-C input, which is used either for connecting it to a computer or for charging. The microphone input, which goes in, I believe, like this. It's keyed, actually. Let's see if it's going there. Yeah, there it goes. Pops up in there like that. And then we also have the 3D uh, button right there. Okay, so now let's go over some of these things. So this headphone has three uh, modes. There's 7.1, which is a standard 7.1 virtual surround mode like uh, most gaming headsets tend to have. I don't like 7.1 virtual surround for music or gaming. I tried this one. I mean, it's not the, it's better than a lot of 7.1s I've heard, but I still don't find any advantage in using it for gaming over standard stereo. I still think 7.1 makes it sound vaguer than standard stereo myself, but your mileage may vary on that, and some people like it, so if you like it, you can use it, but not for me. Now, there's stereo mode, which uh, allows use of like the 3D settings and whatnot, 
And then there's high res mode, which turns off all the other effects and stuff and it puts the DAC in its highest bit rate and whatever, apparently. Uh, and if you're going to listen to music on these, that's definitely the mode you want to use. And that only works when plugged into a computer via the USB, uh, but does not work in Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth only works in 7.1 or stereo mode. And now there's also all the sound profiles. There's default, flat, warm, music, FPS, RPG, racing, the whole, you know, nine yards of all the standard generic, you know, gaming headset, sound card, EQ profiles. Uh, you can play with them. I really only messed around with like default and warm. Uh, warm is like really, really bassy, like beats bass. And default, as I already described earlier, is quite good. But you can play around with them, see if you like any of them. Uh, but I really just didn't mess them too much. And I'm not going to go over what all of them do. Now, of note, this is an active headphone, as I already mentioned. Uh, and that means when you plug in the 3.5 millimeter, it does not turn off the, um, the internal amplifier. And you cannot bypass it. So there's really no, mo no point in using it uh, with the 3.5 millimeter in, in my opinion. If you want to use it on a computer, just use the USB. Don't use the 3.5 millimeter with like your DAC or amp or something because uh, there's really no point in doing so. Okay, and then into the 3D settings. So when you're in 7.1 or stereo mode, you have access to the 3D, also in Bluetooth mode, by the way. Now, the 3D setting is kind of cool to play with. And some people I've seen said that they like this and it helps them in game. And I really don't understand why that is, which I'll explain in a second. So what this does, this headphone has Waves and X head tracking. So there's uh, two modes for the 3D. There's, well, there's off, which is, I guess, the third mode. There's off, there's 3D manual and 3D auto. Now, so 3D manual, you put this on your head and you tap the button when you're looking straight ahead and it'll say centered. And then when you do that, it'll sound normal until you start looking uh, left to right. And when you do that, it sounds like the sound stays in the same spot but then your, as your head moves, it's like the sound stays here, but you're listening like here. So it sounds like it's coming to your right. Uh, and it actually works fully 360. So if you spin 180 degrees, it sounds like it's quieter and coming from behind you and somewhat muffled. So it works the full 360 degrees around. It doesn't seem to work too much up and down, but like full 360 wise, uh, it does work uh, quite a bit. So it's interesting to play with. It has a little bit of up and down, but uh, not as much as like the left to right. So it's a, it's cool to play with, and it's trying to like, I guess, replicate what listening to speakers sounds like, but that's not what listening to speakers sounds like. It's When you listen to speakers in a room and you look to your, to your left, it doesn't sound like really muted in one ear and much louder in the other one like this. So... Uh, it's interesting and it's fun and it's like a cool party trick to show your friends, but I don't listen to music like this that much unless I'm just bored and want to, I don't know, do something interesting. Uh, but you might like it and might want to mess around with it, but I wouldn't use it all the time uh, personally. Now, uh, people say that like this is good for games because it's more immersive. And I always wondered why that is because when you're playing a game, you're looking dead center at your screen the whole time. How much are you moving your head like significantly left and right? I guess maybe ultra wide players, maybe you'd look uh, left and right. But the thing is, is it's not moving your character's head in game. So all it's doing is it's just taking the sound that's centered. And when you look left, it's just going to sound like it's in the same spot, but just more in your right ear because it's not changing how the sound is in game. It's just like trying to replicate speakers uh, and make it sound like it's off access to where you are in real life, not in the game. So I don't understand why that does anything for gaming for anyone. Now, 3D Auto, uh, what that does is if the sound's here, so they say this is the sound in your head's here, when you move your head, the sound slowly comes to where your head is. And you move back and it goes like over a couple seconds. So it just kind of follows your head. And whereas manual always stays in the same spot until it loses its calibration, which it does after a bit if you start moving around a lot. So you just hit recentered. Uh, so those are the 3D modes. Uh, 
Cool to play with. I don't understand them at all for gaming, but they are marketing this as a headset for mixing uh, 3D stereo. Uh, so that is probably a more practical application of this. Uh, but for gaming, like I said, don't understand, but cool to play with for music. And for the 3D thing, I actually did record a little bit of a demo on the ears. Now, please note with this demo, do not take this as a sound demo of how this headphone sounds, uh, especially because the ears is not great at recording stuff. Uh, and I just threw like a kind of a quick little EQ on it just to remove like the painful ears stuff the best I could. Uh, but it's not going to represent how this headphone sounds. It definitely does not sound like how the demo sounds. I'm only doing this to kind of show off how the 3D effect sounds. Uh, so you can hear it for yourself. It actually does uh, show off pretty well if you're listening with headphones. So please listen to this with headphones. You can somewhat tell uh, how the 3D effect works. But once again, please don't use this as a judge of how this sounds, uh, how the headphone sounds. My heart is beating to your drum And I'm blinded by the sunshine in your eyes Not thinking twice in my this dumb Although I know you're all I want How could I crave something so bad? My sweaty palms reveal a warning I should hear But how can you drive me mad? I want you and run to you Okay, so now we are going to move on into the mic test. So I have actually have not uh, tested the microphone yet, so I will also be doing uh, this one live, so you will get my live reactions to this. Uh, and of note, these are supposed to come with a pop filter now. It did not do that originally. Uh, so I will jerry-rig something as a pop filter onto this. Uh, but if you buy a new one, and apparently if you have an old one, you can contact Odyssey and they'll send you one. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we will see how this microphone sounds in just a sec. So see you then. Okay, so here we are testing the microphone on the Odyssey Mobius. Uh, this is not too, too bad sounding. Uh, I still don't think it sounds quite as good as the Sennheiser PC37X. That is probably my favorite uh, headset mic. Uh, but this thing is definitely not too, too bad, and it definitely worlds above the uh, Vocally Rups mic. That mic was not good uh, at all. So overall, for a gaming headset, this microphone sounds uh, pretty decent in my book. Uh, but anyway, back on into the review. Okay, so coming out of that microphone test, we will go over the comparisons and what I think about this headphone. So I guess its main competitor, I would say right now, would be the, the Vocal Erupt. It's also $400, an audiophile uh, gaming headset, although this is open, uh, semi-open, where the Mobius is closed, and actually decently isolating. It definitely isolates more than like an X100 or something like that. Uh, you all probably know my opinion of the Erupt. I think it's a pretty bad sounding headphone. I just don't like it at all. I've not listened to it uh, since I finished my review of it, and I don't plan on ever listening to it again. Uh, so, yeah, the Erupt is just, no, definitely take the Mobius uh, over the Erupt, even though it's quite different. It has, you know, all the, the active with all the modes where this is just a straight-up headphone. Uh, but this sounds tremendously better than the Vocal Erupt. Now, the other one everybody's going to ask about is the LCD one. I have a set here. But unfortunately, I can't tell you how it compares to the Mobius because the LCD one is borrowed from a viewer, but somehow it broke in transit. No idea how. Uh, it didn't get jostled around. The box is fine, but uh, one channel died and the other one lost all its base in uh, transit. 
So the set will be will be replaced. But of note, the Mobius is bigger uh, than the LCD one is. Like the cups are a bit larger, and the build is different. This is much cheaper feeling with much lighter plastic and much lighter overall. And it's not the same build as the Mobius, even though it shares the same general shape. Uh, so unfortunately, I can't tell you how it sounds uh, in comparison uh, to the Mobius. But just note, it's not uh, like the same thing necessarily. Like, this is not just a Mobius driver in an open back uh, passive headphone. Now of note though, everybody who's asking for an LCD 1C, and if they took how this sounds with the default profile and could put it in here, close it up, and sell it passively for 400 that's that's a deal. That's what everybody wants. That's what I would want that. I would buy that myself, actually. Uh, other ones, uh, X100's more dynamic than this, uh, but also much bassier. Uh, and this is a more sane uh, sound signature than the X100 is. This is somewhat kind of neutral-ish, uh, where the X100 is just very V-shaped. Uh, so this is, I'd say, more rational sound signature and more closed than the X100 is. Uh, we have the Neumann uh, NDH20s at $500, $100 more than this. The Neumann's more isolating. Uh, this actually might almost be more neutral than the Neumann. Uh, it's not as warm. Uh, and this also has a little bit of a shallow, uh, very narrow mid-recession. Uh, but I'd say not as bright as the Neumann is either. I'd say this is a little more neutral than the Neumann. Uh, but the Neumann is better as an actual monitor than the uh, Mobius is, which that's what I said. The Neumann is a very, very tailor-made monitor. Uh, DT1770, I don't like, and I've heard, not heard good things about the 177X Go. Uh, and that's all the closebacks that come to mind that I have any experience with in this price bracket. So the other ones that we want to, I want to talk about real quick are the Sony WH-1000XM3 and the Bose QC35 II. Now there's a lot of audio files out there that just buy those as a decent-ish Bluetooth uh, closed back headphone for on the go. And the thing about those are is some people do not need the active noise canceling necessarily because either don't need it or you don't like that it messes with uh, the sound because ANC does mess with the sound a bit. Now, if you don't need ANC and you want a Bluetooth headphone and you can spend up to $400, get a pair of these in the silver. They look, they very muted color scheme. They don't look gamery and they will sound way better than the XM3 and the QC35. Both of those are like okay-ish but I'd put them both at like 100, 150 bucks in sound at best, where this actually probably sounds, I'd say like $300 in sound. And for closed back, I'd say this is actually fair because like the closed back market, like I said, is not great. So this to me is the ultimate sub $500 Bluetooth headphone. And this is one of the better uh, Bluetooth headphones out there on the market, in my opinion. Now, a lot of audio files just have this whole like, you know, cursed, shun, gaming headset, shun, shun, where if you just take the mic off and get it in gray, and like, I, I swear, you would never know this is a gaming headset. It just looks like a Bluetooth headphone. And like I said, this is a really good package, in my opinion. You have a headphone with user tweakable sound profiles. You have gaming stuff, the 7.1 and the gaming profiles and the 3D uh, if you want that, which you don't have to use if you don't want to. It sounds really good wired up in the high res mode and you don't need a DAC and an amp. It has the fun 3D to play with. And at the end of the day, you can take it on the go as a Bluetooth headphone with your phone or your portable player. And to me, I think for $400, all that stuff is actually a fair ask. Now, I think at $299, if, if this like goes on sale, I'd say for Black Friday or something at like $299 or even $350, uh, that's, that's a no-brainer in my book. This is a really complete package that sounds really good with a lot of features and serves a lot of roles. It can be a really good sounding closed back headphone, a really good Bluetooth headphone, and a gaming headset with a decent mic and a lot of features all at the same time for $400. 
and I think that is a really good option out there. And the Mobius definitely gets my recommendation uh, for those roles. If you want a really good gaming headset, this is it. If you want the best sub $500 Bluetooth headphone, this is it. If you want a USB powered headphone because you don't want to have a DAC ramp on your desk, this is it. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Odyssey Mobius. Really good headphone overall, and I really like it. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed my review. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. We actually have something interesting uh, coming up for the next review, uh, but you will have to wait and see what that is. But anyway, uh, links are where to buy these in the description below, as well as the Ears Graph, Twitter, contact email, and all other relevant information. Uh, but anyway, guys, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.